Jim Kendrick Goss. I am one half of the uh, leadership of uh, Workgroup 3. Uh, Rachel Saltzman will be here uh, this evening. And so I'm going to talk to you about um, what Workgroup 3 um, is, what we have done, how that uh, set of goals has uh, developed over time, and what we're looking forward to doing uh, going forward. Let's see if I can get the right... Uh Okay, there I am. So the, the goals of uh, Workgroup 3 uh, are really to um, take a look at what's being learned in uh, other disease communities, and we're talking about uh, multiple sclerosis, ALS, and, um, and, and others, and figure out if we can leverage what's being learned in those communities and apply them to uh, ALD and AMN, and further to um, encourage the, those who are doing the research and those who are uh, champion ther cha championing therapies for those diseases that may uh, have some effect on uh, ALD or AMN uh, and see if we can get them involved uh, and interested in, uh, in working with us for these uh, diseases. And so one of the things that we really wanted to make sure to do with Workgroup 3 is make sure that th this wasn't going to be sort of a, a head-tilting sort of, oh, that's interesting, committee. What we really wanted to do was look and say, all right, what can we practically do? What, what are we actually capable of reaching out there in the world and affecting and making it happen? So let's see if I can get the... Uh, the, the laser part of this going. There it is. So the, the, practi the uh, practicality, the feasibility, the financial viability of these um, new treatments, the likelihood of success was the, was the primary um, criteria for inclusion here. So we developed a method which uh, many of you have seen before and many of you part have participated in, this algorithm method, um, to identify and uh, track these candidate medicines. And so here's the real benefit of Workgroup 3, as, as, um, as Florian was talking about the collaborative nature of, of this uh, group. We, are, uh, we include people from uh, industry, clinicians, uh, patient advocates, and um, most, the most recent um, wonderful additions to Workgroup 3 uh, in this last year have been uh, patients and uh, family members who have made some incredibly valuable um, uh, contributions. Here is a what I think is a complete list and a partial photograph of when we were able to get together um, uh, last year uh, down in Baltimore uh, of, of everyone in Workgroup 3. And so uh, the first thing that we did was to um, put together this algorithm to say, um, you know, how can we evaluate these, uh, these compounds? How can we evaluate what treatments are available? and uh, really um, focus not only on things that, are, uh, that, affect, that target demyelination and other uh, pathologies of, of ALD, but really look at agents that improve this day-to-day -day quality of life uh, set of issues for the patients. And so uh, a second um, important um, uh, goal of uh, Workgroup 3 is to really try to address, begin to address, uh, the fact that the biomarkers we have for ALD and AMN are, are limited, and, and Stefan's going to give us some, uh, uh, an update here in the second half of this uh, presentation on some, some new work about that. It's very exciting. And so here is our algorithm, and it looks like homework because it is. What we did was we assigned the members of the committee um, you know, a compound or a therapy, and the mission was to go and you know, look at not only um, what is the scientific uh, rationale for its usefulness, but you know, ev even sections for how, how easy is it to make? Who owns the intellectual property? How quickly could we get this to patients who could benefit from it? And so the, the algorithm not only included you know, identifying um, these leading contenders, but actually creating a list of like, if we only knew the answer to this one question, or several questions, would that be able to, to advance our understanding? And so um, some of the progress that we have seen after identifying this uh, initial list was reaching out to um, the, some of the industry leaders and, and leading researchers 
And so for one of the compounds um, that has been a major focus is the uh, MD1003. Uh, and we were actually, um, we had the, the privilege of talking to uh, uh, Friedrich Sedell, who's the CEO of Medday Pharmaceuticals, who uh, is running a clinical trial for MS using this compound. So he was he, uh, very generous to, to call into one of our conference calls, and we uh, raked him over the coals about I its utility. And he let us know about the, the fact that AMN is now being included uh, as, a, as, a, um, as a trial um, uh, that uh, MD1003 uh, AMN trial is now being um, uh, executed as a trial. Second, we worked with him to really outline uh, what information we could deliver to the community about the risks uh, and the utility of using uh, this compound uh, off-label, for instance, from a compounding pharmacy. And so what, what I think Workgroup 3 has realized this year is that it's fine for us to come up with a list of compounds that we identify that could be useful. But in a sense, we have a responsibility then to not only follow them, but then to continue to provide information to the community and uh, when and become a resource uh, for that information. Uh, recently, also uh, we had some uh, we had uh, we were following some uh, data uh, from uh, labs here in Boston um, that have shown efficacy for uh, AAV uh, gene therapy in an AMN mouse model, and we also were able to uh, identify. Um, some uh, clinical trials that did not go very well for one of the candidate drugs that we were uh, following. This was our algorithm as we, uh, as, as we proposed it. First, we came up with a list. We eliminated the ones that we thought were less viable candidates. We went on to do that homework assignment on these, and we've begun to follow these with, uh, uh, with greater interest. This is also, this is a, a living document. This is something that um, compounds are added to. Um, and they move back and forth. This has really turned out to be a very dynamic and exciting process, which um, I think we, we hoped it would be, and we're excited it has become. And so the, speaking to the second part of this uh, goal for Workgroup 3, uh, the biomarker uh, discovery uh, efforts in ALD and AMN. And the goal here is, would be to accumulate uh, and analyze as much genetic information that we can from CCALD and AMN uh, patients. And the hope would be to find genetic variations that would predict the disease progression. There, um, the, uh, it, it is not clear that there is a strong genetic driver but I think what's become clear is that the question hasn't been asked as thoroughly as it could be. So what we have here is the possibility to grow um, the size of this uh, uh, cohort um, through ALD Connect by way of the virtual uh, biorepository. And so far, um, the, the virtual biorepository has uh, transferred 75 samples from ALD and AMN patients and family members uh, for uh, full genetic analysis. So they'll be going through the process of that comparison. What we're hoping to do is grow this to uh, a much larger number. And as we know, um, as many of you know, the, the larger the, the, the cohort you have, um, uh, to look at genetically, the, the, the likelihood that you'll find something uh, of strong correlation is, is higher. And so going forward for uh, 16, we are going to continue to uh, use this algorithm list, uh, adding compounds and discussing them uh, in our conference calls, and uh, really try to uh, uh, encourage this uh, preclinical uh, research and uh, try to engage the companies and the uh, patient groups that, that have a stake in, in, these, uh, in these therapies. Um, and then third, to uh, promote the discovery and evaluation of predictive uh, and prognostic uh, biomarkers. 
uh, that could be validated for uh, future uh, drug development and better information to uh, families and patients. And so here in conclusion, uh, many of the potential therapies uh, for consideration um, for ALD and AMN hold promise for this community. We have been delighted by the response of, uh, of companies who uh, have these compounds, and um, we uh, look forward to uh, promoting those relationships more. And the community really has a lot of power uh, to leverage these networks and to inf not only to, to contact these, these uh, uh, drug companies, but to educate them about what the potential uh, utility of their compounds is, which uh, many of them are not uh, as informed as they could be. And so that is uh, one of our goals uh, with this uh, committee. So I'm going to turn it over to Stefan next for the second half. I think Amber had a question. So um, I saw your list where you had your potential candidate compounds, then you narrowed it down, some that were deselected, and then those that are focusing. People often stumble upon them through other ma ma ways of finding it, whatever literature. Is there a clean way we can, and I know it's a little controversial when you eliminate them, why you eliminate them, so maybe this is not doable, but it may be helpful if in a non-political diplomatic way you could explain why we're not focusing on the ones that you're focusing on. Because I know pr I get questions every so often where someone's like, oh, I heard about such and such. Um, why aren't you guys looking at it? And it would be helpful to have that. Is that doable or is that too politically, um, what's the word? So, so this, is, this is what we stumbled upon this year. And we realized that um, you know, being able to show that sort of colorful graph on, on the screen, everyone would get excited. But there was a sense in which we were then the stewards of that information, right? And we had to, to come up with a document that would that we could update, that we could provide information about, um, you know, what the what the risks are for using these things off label, and so what we're in the process now of doing, and we've started this process with the MD1003, uh, is to come up with a document that says uh, clean a description of those uh, benefits and risks that we can. The information that we've had, for instance, uh, part of the conversation that we had with Frederick Sadell. And so, my question wasn't the ones where they're off-label and you can get access mm -hmm. to it because we all posted the Med Day information, which was very helpful. It was sure. great that you guys did that, and he, he gave a very nice um, write-up on it. But more the ones where, unless I misunderstood the slide, where you had like even Epi seven four three and in vivo gene therapy, like as if they were discounted, and it wasn't clear why those were narrowed down, not not as viable options. Well, this was the this was the real realization that Rachel and I had. You know, being proud of this. This one document, we looked back at that list and realized that we, you know, we owed an explanation for all the others. Okay. And so this was, you know, working for hours in that one document and realizing that maybe a hundred hours is behind us, or, yeah. or ahead of us still. Yeah. So, so that is that is definitely needs to be part of the mission going forward. And, to, and maybe just to plant one more question for the panel afterwards is, as you talked about your drug algorithm list and and biomarkers, I wonder whether there's a way to align those two subjects, saying, w looking at that list of candidates' drugs, are there certain biomarker needs that arise now for those candidate drugs where you could accelerate and motivate the biomarker collection, right? Um, and, and sort of thinking about it in a pragmatic way. Well, definitely, and, and looking at not only what could influence disease, but but how to measure that is, is, is important. So it should be you know, biomarkers and endpoints as well. So. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask how in how information from this work group yeah. reaches the world. Yes. Yes. And so that also is a work in progress. And part of it now is on the ALD Connect uh, 
website under the workgroup three, and what we want to do is, is come up with a process where we can dynamically update that. So that's in, in progress.